and welcome to the footy show. We're at the uh, uh, Toowoomba Sports Club and our special guest, St Mary's College from Toowoomba, the 2018 Confraternity Champions. What a fantastic effort from Toowoomba. They played 48 teams, 16 in each division. They were in the top grade and they brought home the bacon. And joining uh, me is my co-panellist, uh, the one and only and former Confraternity winner, Justin Murphy. How are you, Murph? I'm great and a very proud old boy here today to be you of these boys in this shield here again, so it's very good to be. Now you played in 94? 94 and 95. That means that you went to school when you were 27, is that right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you played another year, was it? 94 and 95 in Toowoomba as well. Oh, yeah, that's fantastic. So you're in school for 23 years. Wonderful, Merv. And then joining us, how good is this for our league, Nev? Oh, look, it's sensational, Obian. Firstly, congratulations to the St Mary's School and their rugby league side, but for us, to have a great Twimber Rugby League competition, we need to have a really strong schoolboy competition and this bringing home the bacon for the Twimber district is just sensational. All right, well, let's have a look at this uh, trophy. And how is that one? It's pretty heavy, actually. So that is many years of tradition for the uh, Catholic fraternity. So congratulations to these uh, guys here. And uh, just... Uh, uh, welcome to our coach, Rob Anderson, and what a thrill it has been for uh, for you guys. Yeah, absolutely, Obi. It's, um, it's, it was a great week away with the boys, and um, we sort of knew we could get a win, but the um, the attention and the um, the feedback from old boys like Murph and, and the crew have, has been absolutely brilliant. And the boys were all well-behaved, is that right? Except the coaches, is that right? No, no, we were all well-behaved. <laughs> We're all good Catholic boys, mate, so um, yeah, well, well behaved. So uh, that everyone was good. And a familiar name is Mitch Coiner. Uh, how are you, Mitch? Good, Obi. Doing well, mate. How about yourself? That's good. I just wonder we could keep the mic up there, mate. How about I hang on to it, mate? Right, you all right. Mean, and he's one of the best players in the competition, isn't he, isn't he Nev? Mate, he most certainly is, especially in the forwards. I've watched him in the mats and rats, Muslim. And out on the weekend against Valleys, and he certainly gives the engine room go forward. He's one hard little cookie. All right, now, Mitch, uh, you were the trainer, mate. Were, were they fit, mate? Did they do what they were told? Uh, they were fit. Um, doing what they told was a different story off the field. <laughs> but no, they, they were um, extraordinary with their professionalism up there for the week. Um, they were very fit. It was a hard competition with uh, 28 degrees up there, six games in five days. So they did a fantastic effort. And for you, obviously, playing Toowoomba Rugby League, but this is close to your heart. You must have had a, just a big thrill winning that final, mate. Yeah, I had a massive thrill, mate. Um, I'm an old boy as well with Rob. Uh, I played for St Mary's in 2008 and 2009. Um, and I spoke to the boys a little bit about um, in my year 11 team, we lost in a semi-final. So I didn't really have the opportunity to do achieve what they achieved. So, um, yeah, a few times there, I got a bit into the game, got kicked off the back of the field for being on for too long. But so, um, yeah, I was, I was stoked for the boys to win. So I own Alan Langer, mate. <laughs> yeah, yeah if the good. Broncos are looking for someone, okay. I'll go on. Yeah. <laughs> Who's this young fellow? What positions he play? Over here, we've got Connor Williams. He was our lock for the week. Locks don't have that good a hair, mate. <laughs> That's right. And this fellow here? Over here, we got Brandon Trost. He was our fullback. That's yeah, fullback, uh, yes, uh, uh, mate. I, yeah, your hair, you've been running too much from fullback. <laughs> OK. And then over here, who, who have we got? We've got Ollie Moore here. Ollie was our uh, left centre. Yeah, that's good. You want me to speak? Oh, yeah, you can speak if you like, mate. Uh, yeah, left centre. And you enjoyed it? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, one of the best weeks of my life. Yeah, it was awesome. How many tries you scored, mate? Oh, I grabbed... Uh, one in the semi-final, one in the grand final, yeah. And are you allowed to do an after-try celebration? Um, I've, I've always wanted to uh, throw the ball in the air, but I uh, panicked and I just did a fist pump. <laughs> oh, <laughs> there you go. Not like Murphy he jumps. He jumps I, I, was, I was left centre in 94 and 95 too, mate. Yeah, my... Got to try and both finals too. Yeah, yeah, my whole football career, I was left right out. Now, your name is... Uh, Tate McCormick. Tate McCormick. And you won the Spirit Award yeah. for St Mary's, mate. Now, why do you get that, mate? Because of your hair, dude? <laughs> No, all the we love it. <laughs> we fall out on the game. Uh, that's good. And what position do you play? Uh, left, second row. Uh, good on you. And, mate, how's that spirit of walk, uh, ward work, uh, Rob? Oh, it's a, basically we nominate the player that we thought um, played with the best spirit across the carnival for our team. And Tate was um, the person who gave us all of our energy. He, he mentioned the we love it call. And um, every time we were sort of finding ourselves a bit tired or struggling a little bit, he'd give a we love it call and just it just gave energy to us on the bench as well as the boys on the field, it was great. Oh, that's good. And who we got down here, what's this fella's name, Rob? We got Cooper Howlett down here, Cooper was a front rower, 
He's a tall, lean bit of gear, but he's as tough as nails, Coop. Look down the, cam look down the camera, Coop, and say, I love you, Mum. <laughs> I love you, Mum. <laughs> <laughs> and this fella over here? No, uh, Riley Wilson. Front row. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I was asking Rob, not you. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Now, who do you want to say you love in the camera, mate? Oh, Cooper Howlett. Okay, <laughs> there you go. I love Cooper Howlett. Oh, <laughs> very good. And uh, look, there seems to be a very good camaraderie uh, with the team, Rob. Yeah, absolutely, mate. Um, that was probably the one of the best things of the week is that they're just a really tight punch. Um, they come from about four or five different clubs from around town, but um, they come together for us as a nice tight unit and they, they loved each other's company. Well, let's have a look at uh, on screen there on your pool matches. You had your closest game of the tournament against uh, Abergarry, 26-18. Uh, yeah. You rested a few in that game. Yeah. They got the biscuits. Yeah, we, we got away. They got a couple of late ones on us to sort of close the score up a bit. But, um, yeah, we're probably never in doubt with that still. That, um, yeah, it was a bit tighter than the others. And then St. Peter's uh, Claver, is it? Or, or Clever, which now yeah, Cherry isn't, but we, yeah. we got that uh, college it switch, and you play Mackay as well in the pool. Yeah, Mackay State, oh, it's not Mackay State, it's St. Pat's Mackay, we yeah. got a fairly long rivalry with St. Pat's Mackay, um, and uh, it's always good to get one up on them, so yeah, this okay. is good for us. And then in the qualifying you beat Ashmore there, uh, Aquinas? Aquinas College Aquinas Ashmore, College. Yeah. that was a handsome win, 36-4. to four. Yeah, they scored first on us actually too, and um, Took us a little bit to click, but when we got going there, uh, we put the foot to the pedal a little bit. So little bird good. told me, mate, you love beating Ignatius in the in the semis, 22-11. Is that right? Yeah, it might be a bit of truth in that. <laughs> is bit. that right? That was a bit sweet, so yeah, it was good. And then the big final, 42 to six. Hey, the t the the uh, St. Peter's were right in, right up until the kickoff, weren't they, mate? Oh no, they were in it for a fair while actually. They they bashed us for probably the first 15, 20 minutes, but um, we sort of knew that they'd wear down and we'd get them in the end. Hey, Murph, how good is this? Oh, it's great. It is great, and I took a good interest in it on the social media. It was uh, well, well uh, publicised that they were playing, and the games were live streamed as well. So I watched a few of the games as well. It was really good. And we know a lot of our players from the under 18s, which you've done a lot of uh, interviews with uh, over the season, Nev. Most certainly, Ovi, and there's some very fine footballers amongst these young gentlemen here and across the whole competition. And as I've touched on before, the only difference between the A grade competition and the under 18s competition is the physicality of it, and just a it's another special note, I see a couple of young fellas like Connor Williams, his old man played plenty of A grade in the Twomba Comp. Mm -hmm. Tate McCormick's father as well played plenty of games in the Twomba Comp. So it's great to see that family, different generations coming through. And Jordan Lip, as you mentioned, best and fairest for your team. Yeah, he okay. was Now he's at Queensland uh, reps at this week, is that right? No, uh, Jake Simpkins away at the Queensland Secondary School side, he was our captain. And uh, those honorary co uh, confraternity team members, Jordan Lip, Jake Simpin, uh, Simpkin and Tate. Tate. Yeah. Well, well done, and Jake got the player of the tournament. Player of the carnival, player of the final. He, um, and he's a Queensland rep at the moment? He's a playing hooker for the Queensland boys at the moment, yeah. Is that uh, school, secondary? School. Yeah. yeah, school, so and under 18 school boys, nationals down at Kingscliff. Okay, so, and they, they play a tournament down there this week? Yeah. Yeah, so the finals on tomorrow, they got beaten by uh, New South Wales Combined High Schools yesterday in the semi, so um, they're playing for third spot tomorrow. And we wish them all the best. Congratulations to St Mary's. We'll take a break after uh, and we'll come back with the normal TRL footy show. So let's hear it for uh, St Mary's and what do we say? We love it! Yeah, we love it! <laughs> This is the TRL Footy Show, brought to you by Power FM, live and free from the Toowoomba Sports Club on Power TV Australia. And now, here's your host, from the Obi and Cookie Call on Power FM, Andrew O'Brien, a.k.a. Obi. Yeah, well, thanks, Robbo. And, uh, yeah, Robbo, I don't know what normal means for a uh, rugby league uh, show of ours. We've never had normal since we started. I don't know. But, look, welcome back to th these two boys, uh, Nev and Murph. And also joining us is Rob Anderson. Let's get stuck right into it. Mustangs t uh, lost to the Northern Pride, 54 to 24. And, Rob, you know a little bit about Mustangs. Tell us your relationship with them. Oh, I've never been involved in the Mustang situation, but we've got a few of our um, old boys who play there. So Luke Maidens, there, Zach Stevens, um, Crocs there as well. So there's um, been a fair few boys, and we've got a lot of them who've played in the 18s this year as well. So um, I sort of keep an eye on what's happening in that 20s comp, and um, yeah, the Pride put a bit of a score on them, but um, I also know 
been from up in Cairns for a few years. That um, that's a pretty good crop of players they got in that Northern Pride side as well. And Murph, over the years uh, with St Mary's, you would have seen a lot of those players, and also from Clontarf, go through to Mustangs. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's been a good pathway for them. But um, at the moment, it's a, they knew it was going to be another tough year this year. I think with the national twenties being scrapped, but it's still good to compete against those players and see where you're at. I think. And Nev, are you in the inner sanctum with under 18s, mate? Do you, oh, do you no, know what's going yet. on? No, not really. I, I, thought, I, I, no, I, I do know what's going stuff, on. Mate. I, 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 do. I like to keep on touch what's going on there. and just It's a fantastic competition. It is fantastic. Great to see St Mary's going. So, look, there's a buy for all under 20s. It's called the Colts Competition. And that's probably something to do with that uh, Queensland New South Wales uh, tournaments they're having down the East Coast at the moment. The Phillies, they've been bleeding points the last uh, uh, month and they played a bit better. Uh, they had their only win against Ipswich first round and Ipswich had all their players back and lost 34 points to six. In second grade they played a top of the table, a Nala, and a good effort only going down by 10 points, 26 points to 16. Division one this week played South Magpies, Division two play play West uh, Panthers. And uh, look over to you uh, Rob Moore on this uh, fantastic win uh, for St Mary's. A lot of preparation beforehand? Yeah, we had we um, pretty much started with this group of boys last October, and mm -hmm. um, we do like a like I guess a little mini pre-season before they break for the Christmas holidays. And um, as soon as they get back to us in January, we have a solid three months going into. We had to win two games to qualify for what's known as the Langer competition, which is the elite schoolboys comp. Uh, that's your Kiba Parks and Marsdens wow. and Wavell State Highs. So we're in that competition and. Um, we won one, drew one, lost three, but the three we lost were really tight games. And um, that was great preparation for us going into Copper uh, Excuse me for asking questions. Is Jonathan Thurston ex St Mary's? He is. He is. Yeah, yeah. You know, did he come out and say good idea? Uh, he wasn't able to actually. We um, we made contact, but he, he had a pretty tight schedule. He's a pretty busy bloke, apparently. Yeah. So he's been sending you guys messages though. Yeah, he's sending it like, he's through his academy. They've been sending us heaps of messages, and oh, he's okay. certainly been on board. Lowy, um, Ethan Lowe from the Keys, an old boy as well. He um, sent an Instagram shout out to the boys after they won. So there's been some good um, high profile. The Walker of, boys have all been doing it as well. Yeah, they're, they're, they're all on board. They love it. So overall, Rob, what's the key to uh, the success you've had? Uh, you know, is it is it those little things that they, uh, that you get from those NRL players, or do you think uh, that the boys themselves just uh, bonded very well? It's a bit of a combination, Obi. Really. Um, they certainly bonded really well. Um, now they come from a few different clubs uh, around town, but we were able to bring them together. And we had a bit of a meeting at the start of the season and um, sort of laid some rules around what we want and how to achieve that and what we wanted to do as a team and really built some strong camaraderie. Um, you know, when we handed the jerseys out at Confraternity, we spoke about the legacy of the players for the last hundred years that have, have worn their jersey uh, and that oh, just they have to carry that legacy. Yeah, yeah. So Murph and um, I'd wear your jersey, mate. <laughs> but um, fit, but and that that really struck a chord with them, you know. So yeah, it's um, fantastic. That stuff. was really good. Yeah. The, the history of the carnival as well. Some of the old names that have played, like you said, Thurston, but Wendell Saylor, Brett Dallas, some of those, wow. St. Pat's and Brendan Saul. Yeah, they were they were Moira and um, um, yeah, it's good to get one back on those little blokes. I know so Cyril, <laughs> Cyril Connell used to love the carnival and um, Bullfrog Peter Moore from the Bulldogs. He loved the carnival really? as well. Well, that's fantastic, and uh, look, uh, we're going to have a real St Mary's feel about this show, and as we go to the break, let's uh, watch an interview from Warwick's Young Gun, uh, seeing we're under 18, it's in a famous local name by the name of Barrett, it's Young Jai Barrett, this is the Toowoomba Rugby League footy show, see you after the break. Coming up after the break, we'll review the matches of round 15 and the latest points table. This is the TRL Footy Show, brought to you by Power FM, live and free on Power TV. Andrew O'Brien reporting QRL, TRL Media, and we're here at Father Ranger Oval for this under-18 match between Warwick and Gatton. Didn't get the biscuits, but Jai Barrett, uh, uh, you played pretty well, mate? Yeah, oh, went all right, I think. Yeah. Played better. First season in under-18? Yeah, first season, mate. Yeah. And uh, what position are you playing? Oh, I've been playing a bit of lock, back row. Yeah. Yeah. Gatton's pretty tough, mate, but oh, you would have been pretty proud of yourself. I've watched a lot of you guys this year, and I thought you really put it to them today. Yeah, we went all right. Mustered up it there at the end. Few, yeah, a bit there at the start, bit about halfway through we dropped off. Hey, Barrett's a pretty uh, uh, exper a pretty famous name around these parts. You've got a bit of a, uh, a reputation to uh, upheld, haven't you? Yeah, so I've heard. 
Yeah. I haven't seen many Barrett's play, but yeah. Okay, and uh, who's your most famous Barrett in your family, you reckon, apart from yourself? <laughs> oh, mate. I don't know, probably my uncle. What's his name, mate? Frank. Yeah, I know Frank pretty well, mate. But, mate, I said famous, mate. What oh. about your, your mum or your dad? Or Are they famous? Nah. Are they famous in your eyes? Are they, not really. Are you famous in their eyes? No, probably not. Oh, okay, how many brothers and sisters you got? Got two sisters. Yeah, they play footy? No. That's a question you've got to ask these days, eh? Hey? Yeah, no. Yeah, no. No footy for them. All right, mate. Look, I reckon you play really well. All the best for the rest of the season, mate. Thanks, mate. All right. Thanks for joining us for the TRL Footy Show from the Toowoomba Sports Club. Let's get back to Obi and the panel. Thanks a lot, Robbo. We're back to Round 15 Review where Warwick took on Gatton. Uh, I was down at this game uh, with Nutsy and Gary uh, Lawrence of the Obi and Cookie Call. It was Gatton's last shake of the dice and they disappointed. And uh, Warwick came home with the bacon. And I think they had the Warwick old boys uh, out there. It really went well. But they also won second division, uh, 26-10. And also won reserve grade. Reserve grade, what a game. 22 nil it was at uh, half time, uh, Nev. And then Warwick came back and won 23 22 in reserve grade. Mate, they're certainly passionate, those reserve grade fellas. They mightn't get the praise and the money the A grade fellas get, but when it comes to passion and toughness, reserve grade will take it out every day of the week. And in under 18, it was 34 points to 16. But just back to the A grade, uh, look, Warwick really came to play. Uh, Fui Mano and Dylan Galloway went really well. They had shifted uh, uh, Benny Sullivan into halfback. Harry Sullivan was a lot more mature and he went pretty well. I thought they, they got a lot more clean ball to Fui Mono and Galloway. Well, I think it's time for Warwick. They've got to step up to the plate. Like, we've heard the hype all in the off-season during the first round, into the second round, and starting to get to the business end of the season. I know Phil Economides, he doesn't like coming second. And joining us on the panel is Waddle's uh, Mitch Coyner. And uh, did that scoreline um, surprise you, Mitch? Um, it did a little bit, yeah. I thought, yeah, that's I, the Warwick uh, Gatton one. Yeah, I thought, it, I thought it might have been a little bit closer, um, yeah, to yeah. be honest. It, it's a very tough contest with those two teams, but... Um, Obviously, yeah, yeah, full credit to, to the boys for getting away with, with, with that win. Um, I'm sure it would have been a very physical game. I heard it was extremely cold out there. So um, it's probably the most competitive competition I've played in since I've been in the TRL. There's um, six or seven teams that are um, giving, the, giving the comp a bit of a shake-up at the moment. So. Yeah. And, and Murph, I think, probably disappointing scoreline for Gatton. That's their season yeah. goal. Yeah, I was talking to Luke Nolan during the week, actually. So um, he was pretty confident that they were headed in the right direction. And if they made the semis, he thought that... They could give it a good crack, but obviously this game, it's a massive loss for them, isn't it? So. Okay, and then uh, to Trevor Mickabarrel Oval on the same night, it was Dolby 64. That's big numbers against Oakey 18. Reserve grade 54 nil Dolby yeah. over Oakey. Under 18s 54-6. Uh, from Dalby over Oakey. Second division, Dalby 28 points to four. And Oakey, look, what I take out of that game is we've got four teams still late in the season, second division, still playing uh, competition level. Mate, everyone loves the second division. They're good fellas. It's a good competition. And, mate, you see them smack each other. The crowd loves it. The families all come and watch it. And can't wait to see more games during the year. And, look, uh, Pittsworth returned to the winners list beating Gunder Windy 32 points to 16 and uh, young Ingersoll he got the three points you'll see those on our webs on our Facebook site who got the 3-2-1 there as well reserve grade interesting competition a big win for Pittsworth they're in the five 20 points to 18 over Gunder Windy and Gunder Windy in under 18s 26 points to 20 at Pittsworth now I don't think any of those sites can uh, in under 18s can make the uh, five can they Murph? No not those two is that right, uh, no, Ned? How's Gundy going? I thought they were close. Uh, they were no. close, but uh, I think uh, they're a bit far out of it there as South well. Burnett, yep. And South Burnett, uh, they played brothers 64 points to 12. And who have we got over here? Uh, you Brandon Trost. Yeah, but you get the microphone up there. Brendan. Now, Brendan, excuse my back to, back to you, mate. Did you play out at, uh, you played at Wandai, didn't you? Uh, yeah, we played out at Kingaroy. Yep. It was hot conditions. Um, we were 12 at 18 at half time. Boys were, we were low on numbers. We had 14 that day. 
and um, went out in the second half with the right mindset and just couldn't get the biscuits. So they're a big side, Brandon. Yeah. South Burnett guys, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, like, they're a yeah, big, yeah, quick yeah, side. Big forward pack. They love their footy. Yep. Now, yeah, Brandon, yeah, side. which side's going to win the uh, the title for you for under-18s? Uh, for under-18s, if um, South pull through, I'm backing them. All right, mate. And then in second division, uh, Pittsworth won a forfeit to, to Brothers. And Stanthorpe, 34, defeated Valleys, 12 in the second division. They come in second in the second division. Over to Glenholm Park on the weekend. Uh, uh, Highfields, 66-18 over South. Reserve grade Highfields, 72, defeated South, 4. And then under 18, Highfields, 24, to 20 and we've got is it connor hand the microphone yeah yeah it is connor what's your last name connor uh williams that's right and you played for south in that game yeah yeah i did and what happened mate you lost it <laughs> <laughs> um well we just didn't gel well together um and don't give me the we had players out bit okay <laughs> i've heard that all year in confraternity as well you were there there were 17 of you mate and uh they just uh played better than you is that right uh no we, had, <laughs> we did have 13 but oh, okay. that's just because of rep but um no nah, no no excuses they outplayed us but uh i'm sure we'll meet with them in the finals and hopefully that'll be a good game as well okay so you would have had jake simpkin out jordan lip uh, yeah we had jake out and all the under 20s players that play there um oh. kyle peterson because he's still suspended doing a dumb thing in A grade, but <laughs> Oh, was cool. he? <laughs> Have you ever been sent off, Connor? Uh, yeah, I got sent off that what, game, actually. What, 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 what for, champion? Um, just back chatting the ref. Well, you don't back chat the refs, <laughs> mate. What are you doing? You've got to cost your team. Anyway. I did, that's what I did. did cost your team, yeah. Well, OK. Now, give yourself an uppercut. You'll be right now. On to the Hutchies match of the round. Waddles 24-16 and Mitch Coiner, you're down 16-0. I had just about called it, mate. I thought you were gone. And then you came back, mate. Uh, and look, I've never said it. I don't like saying it, mate, but Valleys were down to 3-1 on the bench. And uh, you guys... Um, Talked yourselves up after the game. I had a, uh, a couple of coffees, uh, uh, liquid sugar and only a little bit of cream. And um, uh, yeah, I thought you had, uh, didn't play that well, actually. Yeah, you weren't the only one that was worried, mate. 16 nil down with 28 minutes to go. We were, we were all a bit concerned. But um, yeah, it was obviously a very patchy game. Um, 50 minutes there where we sort of lost the upper hand and Valley's just outplayed us. Um, but the positive thing that we spoke about on Tuesday is that's the first time all year we've had to chase points. Um, quite often we've been in front by 16 and, and slacked off the last 15 minutes and teams have come back and really um, put some points on us. So it was, it was a positive to see that we've got the mentality that if we're behind in points we can, we can actually um, grind it out and get some wins. But um, yeah, it's good, good vibes around the camp and as you said, uh, they lost Huey Sedger and Jason Sharp, two pivotal members of their team as well. Um, which didn't really help them, but it definitely shaped up to be the um, blockbuster that everybody expected. Yep. And on behalf of the Footy Show, we hope uh, Jason and Huey are recovering uh, well. I hope they can get on the field in the very near future. I've got to ask you a question, Mitch, okay? And I'll need you to, you've got to give me an answer, okay? If you wanted to swap the two premiership points for the Mats and Rasmussen, would you do it? Um, good question. It, it is a good question. I I'm suppose. A, I, I am, suppose. I am on fire tonight. I suppose if you asked me at the end of the season, it'd be yeah, better to see where we'll see where we're you. sitting. No, um, I'm asking but, you now, uh, Mitch, you idiot, come and answer. <laughs> no, but I, would, I wouldn't swap it. That's that's the way it panned out. It was a massive, um, massive lesson for us. We we're up 14 points with eight minutes to go, and, and we lost that game. So it was a massive wake up call about closing out games and playing the full 80 well, minutes. So did, did you lose at 16? Neil, it's, it's easy to throw the towel in a bit then, I think. So mm. coming back from that, it is mentally strong. It's yeah, and, and as I said, um, even though behind 16-0, we'll, we'll, we're positive behind behind the line and we weren't really too concerned that the game was out of reach. So, um, yeah, both games have been a, a really positive lesson for us. So I wouldn't wouldn't change a thing. Do, do you going. find, Mitch, Valley's played a different style on the weekend than they did to the Mats and Rasmussen? Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah. I think... Uh, they, they obviously like uh, playing a lot of that uh, creative footy, a lot of offloads, dropping people yeah. under. I think when they played the Rasmus and they had a lot better balance, they, they, yeah. they had a good go forward in their own half and then wanted, uh, were able to play yeah, expansive. Right. Yeah. Um, but in saying that, defending it on the weekend, it was extremely tough, having to um, constantly go from side to side and shut the gates and 
Um, yeah, their offloads absolutely killed us in the I, middle. I think in the first half, we touched on it before, you were very one-dimensional and they were picking you off. And I think the beauty, you hit the nail on the head before, the beauty of it was that to dig yourselves out of that hole. Mm. And I think that was probably the most positive thing. We'll see, the best game I've seen Travis Burns play this year in the comp. Yeah, it, it wasn't, um, wasn't our best start of footy. As you said, we were very... Um, Oh, I wouldn't say we were flat. We just yeah played one off the ruck, didn't really go in our pairs and have much shape. But uh, as, as you as you said, Trav obviously had a really good game. Um, so did Matty. They both kicked into gear in the in the later part of the game when we needed to them and took control. And uh, once once we sort of scored that first try, um, we got a bit of momentum and was able to uh, to build on that. Good hey mate, uh, well, what's good to say, Nevin? Uh, I don't know what the boys are eating for their breakfast out there, but that uh, Mitchell Duff, mate. How good was he? Mate. I had Nev Cherry going onto the bench to ask him, who was this big, big hooer? <laughs> yeah, yeah. hey? Mate, I did. We, we really hadn't seen him all year. And if you talk about old fashioned front rollers, he, he fits that mould and just, he was sensational. He's only a young fella, he's an Allera boy, and he just give him that go forward. I think he replaced Michael Pearson very well. I think in the first half, he just missed that go forward, someone to lay the platform. And, Maybe he took it on himself to do that for his team. Yeah, it's fantastic. Let's have a look at the points table here in A grade. Now, a bit of distorting here because Waddles have a bye. They're on 26, Valleys are on 22, and Valleys do not have a bye for the last three games. So that means that Waddles will not get two points if Valleys beat Gatton and so forth and so forth, okay? So Valleys and Dolby on 22, Highfields are on 20, Warwick are on 20, they're your top five. The only change that's going to be, that I can see, is the top two positions there. And then the rest, Gatton, Pittsworth, Oakey, Gundawindi Brothers and South in reserve grade. And incidentally, uh, Valleys 30 defeated Waddles 24. Valleys are second in that grade, as you can see. And in under 18s, it was Valleys 52 to 20 over Waddles. In reserve grade, um, look, Highfields are getting a one and a half game uh, lead on uh, the rest of the field there with Valleys, Pittsworth on 20, Gatton on 18. How important is the reserve grade Gatton and Valleys this weekend? Dolby on 17, Waddles on 16, Warwick on 15. How good was that win against uh, uh, Gatton, Murph? And anyone can win that reserve grade, yeah, can't they, mate? They can. It's a close competition. Highfields have been uh, going pretty well in there this year and setting the pace, obviously. but. Um, in the semis, once they get there, anything could happen still, I think. Yeah, well, uh, just looking at this, yeah, Gunda Windy just lost to Pittsworth in reserve grade, and they're on 11, so that's about their season with three games to go. South on four, Oakey on four, Brothers on two, and under 18s, how good is this competition? What's that uh, three points from one to five? South won the mats and Rasmussen. Connor, you still got the microphone? Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, that's good, mate. What is happening, mate? So you got sent off, mate, you lost again, and now you're in fifth, mate. Do you feel really bad now? Uh, no, not really. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot more important things than under 80 for the confraternity. Well, Sean, let's have a look at that again. How good is that? Fantastic. And also, look at this one. Oh, yeah, it's only a little one, but this is uh, uh, Justin Murphy's. Just wonder whether you can see that. We'll get the trophy here from our man. How's that, uh, Mr. Romper Room? Yeah, that's all right. That is the 1994 Confraternity uh, Shield that uh, Justin Murphy won. Fantastic stuff. Obviously, it means a lot uh, from there as well. Back to the uh, the scoreboard. Highfields and Dolby are on uh, 23. Gatton on 22. And uh, South Burnett have gone up into fourth position. I think they were sixth or seventh not so long ago. Uh, uh, there, Nev, and then South on 20. Mate, it's a brilliant competition, Obi. And the amount of young under 18 fellas we see come up and fill A grade spots and play very admirably. Like they, they mix it with the big guys. You can tell they're out there to learn. And mate, it's going to be a cracker of a semi final series between these young guys. That, those 18s, when they go into first grade, they bring that enthusiasm. Mate, they they do. look real they good, do. don't they? Yep, and there's some good players there. You know, like just say that South under 18s, it's been touted, not that they would do this, but. I thought about chucking them out in the A grade game and see it. They played Waddles in the first round there, and I know they got touched up, but even the Waddles guy said, you know, they mixed it with them. I think a game down in Gatton earlier, Connor, didn't you? Have a lot yep. of players down there as well um, that played 18s and then first grade. Yeah, yeah. Um, most of us boys do play up. Um, we have Jordan Lip has played up three games already, on. and he's uh, only yep. just turned 17. I played my first one against Highfields on the weekend, yep. and you can tell the difference between our. 
18s and A grades straight away. So but, what's the difference? Uh, yeah, they're better. <laughs> Under 18s are better. <laughs> no, nah, just the physical side of it, I yeah. guess. Uh, fast pace, but yeah. yeah. Um, just, yeah, better players up there as well because they yeah, are right. a lot older than us. It's good when you guys play against men and then come back and play 18s though too. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> and I might bring Rob Anderson in on this. Uh, now, Rob, uh, you obviously know a lot of guys in this under-18 competition. Who do you like for the Premiership? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, Highfield's um, a pretty good side. Like, they just got a bunch of toilers that... Um, with a little bit of X Factor, like we had young Sammy Alara and Corey Haywood and Jack Hutton and Alex Bright and a few boys from our side in that. And um, if South can put it together, they'll um, they'll be pretty hard to stop, though, I think. OK, because I think there's a lot of few guys you know on that South side. Thanks very much, Rob. <laughs> and uh, look, uh, in sixth position in under-18 is Valleys in Gundawindi. They are three clear uh, games with three games to go. So you think we have our top five. Pittsworth, Warwick, Brothers, Waddles and Oakey take up the rest. And in second division, um, we've still got games in hand. There's only one second division game uh, this week. And Gatton lead that second division. And then we've got Stanthorpe, Derby, Pittsworth, Warwick. They look like to be the top five. And then Oakey, Valleys and Brothers. Now, before the break, uh, let's look at another interview of the Hutchies player of the round. And what a game he had. It's Waddles, Mitchell Duff. This is the Toowoomba Rugby League footy show. Up next, our preview of round 16. This is the TRL Footy Show, brought to you by Power FM. Andrew O'Brien reporting QRL, TRL Media, and I, our Hutchies Builders pl uh, player of the round, uh, Mitchell Duff. And I suggest to you, Mitchell, uh, and we think you've come of age, mate. Uh, you played well out of Gundawindi last, uh, last week, and hey, you didn't die wondering to, today, did you, mate? Oh, well, we uh, left the run, run a bit late, but we come good in the end. Yeah, look, uh, you, you, you seemed to time your, well, your runs uh, well and you knew where the game was at the time. Yeah, we, I've been working on that a little bit, coming into a new side halfway through the year. I've been out of time a fair bit, but we're slowly getting there. I've still got a fair bit of work to do, running off Matt and that, but we're getting there. You seem a bit fitter this year, mate. What have you been doing? Uh, since i come up, I've been doing a little bit extra, trying to shoot a bit faster in our old A grade than it is in Reggie's. Yeah, uh, Waddles Juniors, are you? Yeah, mate, under 11s I started playing for Waddles. How old are you? 21. Yeah, and uh, what do you do for crust? Oh, I'm a diesel mechanic. Yeah, mate, and uh, look, uh, you're enjoying your footy, aren't you, mate? Yeah, it was good out there today. It was. We tried to tighten up our defence a bit, and we did. Still let a few lot of offloads go, so Travel have something to say about that, and we'll work on that next. Have you got a player of the match, mate? No, nah, not an A grade. Yeah, mate, <laughs> are you married, mate? No, mate, I'm not. Uh, you got any girlfriends? No, I don't. Yeah, well, can you tell them now that you saw the great Obi, mate, and you got uh, play of the play of the match? You want to tell your phone number, mate? I'll let them know. They'll come running when I mention your name, maybe. <laughs> Good on you, mate. You play very, very Thanks, well, uh, Duffy, mate. And all the best rest of the season, Thanks mate. Thanks very much, mate. All right, well done. Thank you. and coffee.
Whether you're a professional musician, a weekend warrior, or just starting out, you need to talk to the experts at Royce Music. With over 35 years' experience, Royce Toowoomba's oldest music store, specialise in guitars, drums, and sound equipment, and can even repair and maintain your equipment. Call them today on 46-327-377, drop into their showroom at 17 Bowen Street, or find them on Facebook. Royce Music, selling Toowoomba's finest musical instruments. Hi, I'm Neil from CGD Group and we do printing with imagination. Our products and imaging have that wow factor. Whether it be business cards, flyers, the Coffee Gazette or our brand new A5 video folders and animation. Have your business branding remembered. Call us today on 4639 5553. CGD Group, printing with imagination. On Power TV Australia, we take a frank look at computers, the internet and social media with a team of experts from around the world with Switched On IT. Learn what makes the internet tick and how to keep your kids safe online. Discover a whole new world of entertainment at www.powertvaustralia.com or download the app from the Google Play Store. Welcome back to the TRL Footy Show from the Toowoomba Sports Club, live and free on Power TV Australia. Now it's back to Obi and the panel for our preview of Round 16. Well, thanks a lot, uh, Robbo, and what a uh, talent that Mitch Duff and he's going to be very important come finals time. Now let's have a look at the top five aspirants, and I've put in a little prediction here for both these, uh, uh, all these top fives. Now, Waddles, they've got uh, by this weekend. Uh, Dolby uh, away and Highfields at home. Now, I'm predicting that Dolby will probably take the biscuits against Waddles, and that is a real key game. So they'll finish on 28. Valleys are the only team that has uh, no buy, and if they win those three, which they would be favourites, Gatton at Valleys, Warwick at Valleys, and Pittsworth away. They'll also finish on 28 points, so hence more important on that Dolby game. Now, Dolby play Gunder Windy in our Torma Sports Club match of the day out there at Gilberts Park. And you'd think that Dolby would go into that uh, game being favourites. We'll talk about that in a moment, uh, Nev. And then they play Waddles at home, as I said, and they have a buy in the last. So that's 26 points that they can get. Whereas you look at the next two teams, Highfields, they play Brothers by Waddles. And then Warwick play by Valleys and Brothers. So I think we've got our four and five here. So the only question is who's going to finish first or second in their boat. Mate, it certainly is, Ovi. Am I right with my prediction, mate? Yeah, yeah, no, it's spot on. That's well, the first time being right. You bamboozled you? me yeah, after the right. first line, but yep. anyway. But no, I think Waddles, and they deserve to finish on top. They've been the benchmark. They're the benchmark before the season started. Yeah, I tipped them for the premiership, mate. Yeah, you did. You tell us that every week. But yeah, anyway, you, you tell did. me you're going for high fields <laughs> too. Could. No, they're coming good. They're coming good. But yeah, look, they deserve to win the minor premiership. But I think there's not much. But like we said, we talked before the game over there. And the only thing, I think the talent cancels each other out on the five top sides, it's desire on the day. And whoever turns up wanting to play and wanting to win, they're the fellows that will win. This time of year, Murph, you know, like we've got three games left. Uh, some have got two, then two or three games in finals, you know. Can you peak too early, as we saw with Valleys last year? Yeah, I don't know. I think the teams have got buys. Valleys yeah. don't have a buy. So Which we didn't have that last year, yeah, did we? Yeah, that's right. So, yeah, so uh, is that going to help them, I think? Well, I think it can. They can refresh up in yeah. a buy. So it depends where you got your buy. It can uh, really help you, I think. Waddles have a ball this week, two games and then semis, and then they might get another ball if they finish first. Yeah. So. And Mitch, from a player's point of view, uh, you'd like the buy? You'd prefer the buy? We didn't. We haven't had this for um, the last few seasons. No, I'd, I'd definitely like the buy. I think I'd probably speak on behalf of all the players. It's just yeah. great to um, have a week off, give the body a rest, and even you know, just, just have the weekend to yourself, go away with your family and, and have a bit of time off. So, yeah, I, I definitely um, enjoy having a bye weekend, that's for sure. All right, well, that's predictions. I don't know whether you agree, <laughs> but certainly that Dolby Waddles game next uh, week after next is going to be an absolute perler. So let's go on to, is it uh, round uh, 16? And uh, we're going out, as I said, to Gundawindi. It's the Intrust Cup, East versus Redcliffe. They kick off at, at one at one ten. The Gundawindi Dolby game kicks off at, at uh, half past six. We go to air at half past five. Wally Fulton Smith's coming on uh, for our pre-game talk. That should be a beauty. How do you see this one going, uh, Neville? Mate, well, I see it's a real danger game for the Dolby diehards. Like Gundy, they've been unlucky all year, but depends how they go away from this season. If they Work, look at it as a platform, they're in good stead for next year, so they'll be, need to be very careful out there. I think they'll get the cookies, but 
I'm going to be, mate, they're tough at home. Okay, Murph? Yeah, I like the way Derby have been uh, finishing the season. Yeah, I think yeah. they've been building into the season and uh, they're going to finish pretty strong. I think they'll win this one. Mitch? Uh, yeah, probably have to go with Derby as well. Um, they're a team that's had potential the whole year but just seems to be really clicking over the past um, three to four weeks. But in saying that, um, Gun to Windy will be very tough at home and they're, they're a phys very physical side, so you've got to go out and be mentally prepared. And play. behind me, I've got what's your name? Okay, get the microphone to Cooper, please. Dolby or Gundy, mate? Uh, I have to say Dolby. Why, mate? Because <laughs> you're, you're a Corey Blades fan? I'm a, uh, yeah, I'm a Corey Blades fan. <laughs> Top bloke. <laughs> Good on you, yeah, okay. And your name? Uh, Ollie. Ollie, who are you going for, mate? Uh, I'll pick Dolby. Good pick. And? Oh, yeah, I'll go Dolby as well. What's your name again? Uh, Riley. Okay. Riley. Now, you're playing under Eddington on the weekend, eh? Yeah, I play for South. And who are you playing? Um, we've got Pittsworth at uh, Pittsworth tomorrow night. Okay, looking forward to that? Yeah, looking to get back on track. Going to have all your players back? I don't think you are, are you? Uh, no, we're still missing a couple with the under-20s Mustangs, but um, yeah, hopefully we can get the win out there. Okay, I hope they can keep all your players on the field as well. Now, you're, you're playing on the weekend? Yeah, um, I play for Pittsworth, so we're playing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. Is that why you sat in the middle? Uh, <laughs> might, might, have, might have been. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. All right, we'll ask what the uh, tips are as we go. And then uh, Highfields Brothers. Uh, look, uh, Brothers, as I said, they trained in the rain last Friday. All three grades, how good wow. is that? And uh, so I think uh, I can speak on behalf. We'll all go for Highfields on that one. And then our Hutchies match of the round, Valleys versus Gatton. Uh, and Gatton will not want to, uh, well, they lost badly last week to Warwick and they'll really want to put a show on uh, this week, won't they, Merv? Yeah, they will or no, they'll be up for this game and they'll be out to uh, sort of spoil up Valleys a little bit. Their Valleys run to the uh, minor premiership, I think. So you'll be going for Gatton, won't you? I'll be going for Valleys. Yeah, on you. <laughs> uh, Neville? Mate, I'll tip Valleys as well, but it, like, it's a danger game for them. They had a big game last week and there's some bruised and battered bodies around, so they just got to go with the right attitude and I'll tip them. Okay, Mitch? Uh, I might go with Gatton for this week, um, just because I don't know the state of, of Sharpie and Huey, whether they're coming back. They're two very pivotal players, as I said before, in their team. Um, Gatton obviously had a rough loss to Warwick last week as well, so I think... Um, Two, week, two weeks in a row, I don't think they'll play that type of football. So I'll go for Gatton in a rough call. I think Sharpie's done for the season, I've heard. So mm. oh, OK. Yeah. Well, look, I, I like it when people come to the panel and have a bit of controversy. They get another start <laughs> then. So uh, that's good. Now, uh, get the Valleys? I think after a rough loss last week, Gatton will bounce back and they'll get Valleys. All right. Uh, so this, what, do, what do you reckon, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm with... Um, Cooper and Mitchie, um, I, I think that can do the job, yeah. Who's going to be their key players, mate? Oh, got a, uh, I like Hayden Lip. he's a good player. Oh, do you? Play with his brother, Luke yeah. Nolan's real good, Luke he's, Nolan's he's my well. plumber, so. Oh, that's good. <laughs> and this guy over here? Oh, yeah, I'll have to go Gatton as well. That's good, are you a Bush Ranger fan? Oh, I don't know, no. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right, you've got to pay more attention to A grade and listen to the OB and Cookie Cool more often. I'll put you out there. Okay, now as we go to the break, I think you'll enjoy this interview. It's from Skeeter Williams that Neville had and his wonderful boys, uh, Zach and Jesse, that uh, Neville did. Uh, this is the Toowoomba Rugby League footy show. Coming up after the break, it's Obi's rant on the TRL footy show brought to you by Power FM, live and free on Power TV Australia. Uh, Neff Jerry reporting for the Toowoomba Rugby League out here at Platts Oval at Clifton and we've just watched a wonderful game of the A grade between the Valleys Roosters and the Waddles Warriors and if you take a walk down memory lane back in the 90s, if you ever made a break through the Waddles defence and you were running towards a cement pylon or a steel pole or Skeeter Williams, you'd choose a steel pole because you'd snap you in half skeet but talking you've got a son that plays for the Valleys Roosters and the Waddles Warriors, young Zach, he's like qualifies for the under 18 still but you must be proud as punch, he's got tries in the Mats and Rasmussen, he's worked his way into the A grade side for the Valleys Roosters and playing very well. Oh, Nev, thanks for those kind words mate, yeah look proud as punch of him mate, yep. um, he's found his feet Jack, Zachy, he's um. He's progressing as a good footballer, mate. Um, same with Jesse, look, uh, knocking on the door of first grade. Um, I don't know about myself, mate, like they're the boys <laughs> are the boys, but yeah, mate, um, yeah, very proud of them, Nev, yeah, very proud. Mate, mate, you most certainly would be. If you go back to the Mats and Rasmussen and Zach, it looked like he was on there to fill numbers, and they kicked over to him, and he beat three players to score in the corner and put the Roosters right in the game and give them a lead, and that must have been what dreams are made of. 
Nev, I think it's um, yeah, he's got to get ahead, mate. Real good uh, brain for football. Yep. Mate, he looks around, sees who's, who's free and who's not. And, um, yeah, take your opportunities as he comes, mate, which he's done and, yeah, very proud of him, mate. Mate, Zach, you're still eligible for 18s. You made the Crows side, yeah. they tell me. And so are you enjoying your side time playing with Brett Seymour on the A-grade side? Yeah, they're, they're real comfortable, like, to go in there. Like, a few of the first games I was a bit nervous, but the boys made me feel comfortable in there. And, yeah, like, with Crows and that there, it kind of just gives me a bit more confidence, a bit more opportunities. Mate, for a young fella, you're certainly starting to make your mark on the competition. You're scoring plenty of tries. And if I just get Jesse to come in. Jesse featured in the All-Stars Indigenous game at the start of the year. You played very well, Jesse. Any other club you'd be playing A-grade for sure? Just it's hard to get in the A-grade side out here at Waddles. Yeah, mate, it is. Um, with a bit of depth in the club, it's sort of hard to crack in. But when I get my opportunity, I'm hoping to put my hand forward. And, yeah, hopefully I've been doing that. So hopefully I'll be up for selection in the last few games. Mate, good stuff. It'd be certainly a great side to play to get in. But interestingly, I was watched when young Zach scored in the corner down here in the first half and you're a Waddles player and you start cheering for the Valleys. I thought the locals were going to string you up, Skeet. They're a bit hard, that call, mate. Uh, you know who my heart <laughs> is, mate. But, yeah, look, I... Family support, mate, yeah, supporting. Boys are good, mate, but, uh, yeah, look, it's a great competition this year. It's um, good to see you. every side's kind of, like, stepped up to the mark and, yeah, kind of performed too, mate. So it's, um, yeah, good for the competition, mate. Well, Skeet, from the outside looking in, you're living the dream. You get to come and watch your young fellas play footy every weekend, but on top of that, you've raised two very respectful young men and you've done a very good job. Well done. Neb, thanks very much, mate. Thanks for Cheers, gentlemen. Much, mate. Thank you. <laughs> Sunday night at the movies. Latest release movies brought to you exclusively by US filmmakers, including Lima Films. Sunday night at 7pm right here on Power TV Australia. Hi, this is Mick Jagger on Classic Vinyl. This is Debbie Harrow from Blondie. This is Jimmy Barnes here. Stevie Nicks from Fleetwood Mac. This is Reverend Willie G from ZZ Top. The best track from the greatest albums of our generation. That's right. From your breakfast and coffee. <laughs> Classic rock. Don't touch the dial. Powerfmradio.com.au Playing indoor netball, cricket, soccer, dodgeball and volleyball is a great way to keep fit and catch up with friends and the place to go and play any or all of these sports is Action Indoor Sports. There are competitions for juniors and adults of all levels of ability from beginners to the most experienced. Action Indoor Sports is home to Inflatable World, an inflatable theme park for all ages and new and coming soon indoor softball. Go and see for yourself. Action Indoor Sports is located at 31 Spencer Street, Toowoomba. Check out the website website to WombaIndoorSports.com or phone 46359999. Well, welcome along to my music. I'm Jeff Black.
let me tell you about the T-Bird Diner. Well, just over here, we've got a Ford Custom line that's crashed through the wall. Next episode on my music on Power TV Australia. I'll see you then. Thanks for joining us for the TRL Footy Show. And now it's time for Obi's Rant. Okay, well, my rant is a pretty good one. I've got a couple of them this week, and what it is fantastic for the area for the Interest Cup to come out uh, to Gundawindi. And I tell you what, um, a couple of seasons ago with Gundawindi, uh, a lot of the other clubs are saying, well, why have we got them in the club? Now it's the other way, is that the Toowoomba, we cannot do without Gundawindi. They are fantastic, aren't they, Neville? Mate, mate, certainly are. Like, as I've said in earlier clips, that, yeah, it was... People didn't want to go out there to play, but these days, people look forward to it. It's a trip for the weekend, mm -hmm. and the way the Gundawindi clubs turned the, the crowd around, the players around, even their facilities, it's second to none, and a beautiful playing field, beautiful amenities, and it's a great place to go, and, and they love their rugby league out there as well. Now, my other rant is that we talk a lot about the rugby league family, but I do think that it's a community, you see, and Neville and I have been speaking about it over the week, you see, and like, uh, well, I talk a lot about culture in clubs, and I go from club to club, I've been in more clubs than Shirley Bassey, but it's a very important thing that we have a, a community, because it all helps, and doesn't, because a, a family is sort of um, uh, cocooned in, don't you, Neville? I, I, you're dead right there, Obi. If I think if we look at it as a, a league family, people take liberties and expect things. Mm -hmm. But if we look at it as a league community, that way everyone can contribute from whether you're under six to the top grade referee or top administrator. And if we all come with that attitude of making a contribution to making the competition better, I think the Toowoomba Rugby League's on the way up for many years to come. And uh, Murph, the Interest Cup, very important for the region. It's got to keep coming. Yeah, I think it's really good that we get as many high-level games as we can. We've had yep. an NRL game here this year, a trial game at the start of the season, now we're Interest Super Cup game. So I think it's really good for this region. Yep. And Mitch, uh, have you played Q Cup, mate? Uh, no, I haven't played Q Cup have yet. Have you trialled? Uh, I've tried. I've been down to Ipswich the last three years. Um, I played BRL uh, in the Brisbane Rugby League comp for the last two years. There, I played a few trial games with Q Cup, um, but was a bit unfortunate to, to not make a start. But um, and last year at the start of the year, I did the preseason and, and ruptured my Achilles heel one week before our first game. So, okay. yeah. So, how did you find the BRL to the TRL? Much difference? Um, probably just the depth of the BRL. Obviously. Yep the strength of the Intra Super Cup comp. Um, so many players are on the fringe of playing um, yeah, yeah. from that BRL comp. So across the park, all 17 were extremely strong. Um, yeah, yeah. And obviously in quite um, quite in-depth training as well. So in regards to um, physicality and skill level, it was pretty similar, but the speed of the BRL, I think, was yeah, a little right. bit quicker, yeah. And so. Murph, what's your take on community uh, and family issues around yeah, the culture? Yeah, definitely, I've been involved in different clubs around, and. Um, People that just come to a club for themselves and to take, I don't think that's not the way to, to uh, a successful club. You've got to contribute, like Orkney have said. You've got to go to a club and you've got to give, give them as much as they give you as well. I reckon whatever you go, you, d you do your job and if you can uh, contribute, then that club's going to be better and it'll grow on from that. Well, Murphy, you look at the top clubs in our competition, the Waddles, the Highfields, the Dolbys, and I like to watch the bench and what's going on behind the scenes and they would have the Pittsworth same thing. The most helpers, the most volunteers, everyone's active, everyone's playing a part. And I think that's what's put out into the field is a, a consequence of what's happening off the field. Definitely, and that'll grow the club for the future as well, not just one season and, yep. and not just for success for one year, it'll grow up for continuous years yep. as well. Okay, we've got the Player of the Year table up on screen now, and the main change for that is Daniel Hayer, or Dylan Hayer Dylan. from uh, Oakey. He's now level with James Dempsey, and it's a very packed leaderboard there. So uh, that's it for this week. Thanks for our panellists, uh, Nev, uh, Justin, and of course, Rob Anderson, Mitch uh, Cornier, and all the boys from St Mary's. Uh, we thank you so much for, for coming along. And uh, we'll see you next week. Oh, by the way, before I finish, we're going to go out to the clubs this next month. I think we're going to Dolby, we're going to Gatton, we're going to Waddles, we're going to Valleys as well. It's going to be an absolute hoot coming to the end of the season. And look, we'll see you all next week. This has been the TRL Footy Show. Thanks to our major sponsors, Power FM, Royce Music and Computer Troubleshooters Toowoomba West. If you're in business and interested in advertising on Power TV or Power FM, you can contact us by phone or email. The details are on the screen.
This has been a Power TV Australia production in conjunction with Power FM. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and remember to download the Power TV Australia app from the Google Play Store. Thanks for your company for another edition of the TRL Footy Show. I'm Robbo. We'll catch you next week.